Building a second brain is actually a concept that was kind of invented by Tiago Forte here. Now I've been hearing about this concept around the productivity community and it's really where you build basically using a note taking app like Notion or Evernote and you store all your information in there instead of well your actual brain. I built my second brain about two years ago when I started in the workforce. So I started out as a mechanical engineer and I had a hard time dealing with the sheer amount of information that was in blueprints like symbols and vocabulary and needed a place to store it all. So in this video, we're gonna go over the overview of the book, Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte, a little bit about how I store everything in Notion as an engineer, and then go into the exact examples of how I'm using the software. If you're new here, I'm Liz. I'm a data science manager at Intel and I film videos about productivity, kind of data science, all that fun stuff. So if you're into that, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump into it. Now I read Tiago Forte's Building a Second Brain. It came out in book form. He also has a class, which I haven't taken yet, but I still want to, but he has two main acronyms. The first one is called CODE, which is how you're supposed to go about note taking itself. So the C stands for capture, like grabbing the note itself. O is for organizing, like organizing the notes. Distilling is like filtering out the notes. And then expressing is like showing your work, like actually making it into something tangible. The second acronym is actually how you go about organizing stuff, which is PARA, P-A-R-A. -A, and that stands for projects, areas, resources, and archives. So I kind of agree with two of these, which is the projects and the resources. Areas is like more like fitness and like overarching areas you wanna focus on. I don't have those. Um, I tend to just do a project or it is a resource slash archive. So I tend to lean towards two of them, but that is what he talks about in the book. Now I actually wanna add one section to when you organize your notes in a digital app. I personally think you should have a boring section, like stuff that you are working on day to day. It's in a Kanban style, and then you have your projects and resources. I really think that's the three categories. Now your boring stuff are your day-to-day -day task. Usually it's in a Kanban style, which is basically like a bunch of columns where you can move things along. Now this is seen in the books, getting things done and also 4,000 hours. It's recommended that the Kanban board style is the best for like daily to-do lists almost. Okay, so let's take a look on my computer here. And this is the actual Kanban board I use for my work day to day. So this is my actual nine to five job. Well, I shouldn't say nine to five, but day job, you know? And so this is the Kanban board. I have a hold and in progress and completed. Graveyard is like all the stuff that's like non-priority, like it's being held off for several months. Completed is completed. In progress is in progress. I only allow myself to have two or three items on the in progress so I don't overwhelm myself. And then on hold is stuff that's coming up, but I haven't quite, it's coming up in the next few weeks, but it's not graveyard because it's not months, you know? And then I also have my daily LLC tasks. So this is stuff that's not work related. It's my work related, like my side hustle or like side job, whatever. And these are things that don't really fit into a project like email Google domains, um, fill out a form, you know, update an EIN number. Like that doesn't really fall into the project of creating a video. It's just like random miscellaneous things that I need to keep track of. So the boring stuff, and you can see this is Kanban style and it's, you know, by concealer, it's personal stuff too. And so if I don't, if I'm finished, I just basically click this. I put the date in there. Let's say I finished it today and then I would move it over to completed and move it back. So it's Kanban board, it's really nice. I can open this and go, this is the column I need to look into and you're basically set to go. Okay, so projects is the second area which I like to focus in and that is something that Tiago said in his book and then I realized I actually do this and didn't know it. So I have two main projects and that is YouTube and Skillshare. So let's take a look at them. Okay, so this is my YouTube Kanban board project. So it's all in one area. So this would be considered a project. The other ones were the boring stuff, right? The, the daily work tasks, daily LC tasks. And this is my first project. Now each one of these is kind of like a little mini project. So it gets its own little card. And I have these columns, not started scripting, 
ready to film, need to organize, need to upload, editing, thumbnail, posting and completed and they're all in different stages. So you can see two of mine are stuck in thumbnail and I need to like go take photos. But it's really nice because this way you can see it's all organized by project. And then when you go into one, you can actually see the script and you can see any links to other things. Like here, let's go and how to set up. Here, let's do the financially stable one. Okay, so we open this guy and you can see right here, I have all these pictures. Um, my editor's in here, she can take a look. And then I have these books, which is really fun because you can actually link to the books themselves because I have notes on each one of these books. Now I copied and pasted the notes that I had, but what's really cool is you can actually go in Notion and do link and then type in, um, I will teach you to be rich and pull it in right there. So then you have a link straight to the book. And that's kind of what his idea in his building a second brain is. You can start mashing things together where your books are now in a place that can be connected to your YouTube videos. So you can go in here, click that, and then you have all your notes on I will teach you to be rich. So, and then you can see what videos I did make about this or it's linked to another book so we can go back. Um, but it's really cool because you can link everything together. And that's kind of his whole point is then you start having these cooler ideas, these better video ideas, these better project ideas because of this. And then the second project I have is my Skillshare class, which is very similar, right? Because it's, you're making videos. And then here is all the ones that I have posted. And then I start drafting the scripts here, which I haven't actually started yet. So I need to move those into not started. But that is how I track things for projects. I always prefer Kanban board styles for daily work tasks and projects because you can see your progress. You can see if you're 50% done, if you're 100% done. I just totally recommend it when you're doing any type of project tracking. And lastly, we have resources. So resources would be books, engineering vocabulary, um, authors, and you could do courses or classes. So let's take a look at what mine look like. Okay, so as an engineer, I come across a ton of acronyms. So you can see VVR, VAV, FTU, FRAC, EOL, PV, and they all like describe mechanical things because I'm in the semiconductor construction industry. So I had a very hard time like memorizing these acronyms in my head. So I just keep them here and then I can search for them up at the top. So typically, when I open one of these, I have several things I like to fill out, the acronym, the topic, which I have a ton of other options and an image, and then when it was created, and then I have notes. So I don't have notes on every single one, and I haven't quite finished that, but if you go to like PLC, for example, let's just pick one. You click this, you scroll down, and you can embed YouTube videos, you can take pictures, and all types of things. And then I see, oh, this is linked to another page. Um, Modbus communication module. So I click that and you go, oh, how cool is this Modbus? And you can kind of get lost in here and just keep moving around and watching videos and almost creating your own Wikipedia for your engineering knowledge. And then as that grows, you have something that's searchable rather than like taking notes in a notebook or trying to memorize it in your head. You can easily, if someone's, if you're in a meeting, you can easily go to vocab and just search like, um, PLC and go, oh, what was that again? Oh yeah, that's it. And then brush up on some notes as the meeting is going along. And that's my favorite way to use this as far as engineering knowledge goes. I also will use this for engineering courses or computer science courses as well. So if we go into like this Python course, you can scroll down and I have all my notes, but it's, you can embed code into here. So this is another really good option for if you're in computer science or engineering and you wanna take classes on the side, this is also what I consider a resource because it's not, I'm not necessarily learning Python for a specific project. It's really just for the sake of learning. So it's more of a resource rather than a project. And lastly, we have my virtual library here. So you can see these books are in color coordinated order. So you know I'm like extra OCD when it comes to organizing my books. But this is also great because you can go in here and look at your notes and then you can also link to different things like the, cult the culture code, that's another book. You can go into here, see what books are 
associated with this book and click this and you're almost making like your own little Wikipedia page, kind of like we would do it with the engineering knowledge, but just with, with books. And I completely recommend this if you like to read. And this could be, I do a lot of business books, I do a lot of physics books, some engineering, but it's really cool to have them all linked in one place with the YouTube videos, with your side projects, with your engineering job. So that's kind of what I recommend this for. Now this is all for tracking knowledge and goals and just making sure that you're staying on track with what you want to accomplish. Now I do have an accomplishment calendar technique, which I actually prefer when I look broad view on what I have achieved in the month or the year. So I will link that video here. Otherwise I will see you guys next time.